The Vogner's fleet of sleek silver ships exploded into burning hellfire when Earth's primitive vessels unleashed experimental weapons, turning the arrogant alien's laughter into dying screams. Earth's leaders trembled as the towering reptilian Wagner ambassador burst into the United Nations Assembly, his four limbs twitching with anticipation. Your planet and species are now the property of the Wagner Empire, Hector hissed, his forked tongue flicking. Surrender or perish, your feeble ships are no match for our superior technology. The human representatives begged for peace, but Hector laughed. Cooperate with an inferior species? Never! Philip Ward, a rugged 35-year-old former Navy SEAL, clenched his fists as he watched the broadcast. Admiral Thompson, his old commanding officer, turned to him grimly. Ward, you're our only hope. Find a way to neutralize those Wagner bastards before they enslave humanity. Their technological edge makes this almost impossible, but we have no choice. Fail, and humans will suffer a fate worse than extinction. Ward tensed the weight of his task sinking in. The survival of eight billion souls rested on his shoulders. Somehow, someway, he had to find a vulnerability in the seemingly invulnerable Wagner ships and smash their fleet. Time was running out before the aliens unleashed their wrath and subjugated Earth. He needed a miracle. And fast. Ward slammed his fist on the table inside the secure Pentagon war room, i figured out how to take out those scaly sons of bitches. He flipped open a manila folder, revealing schematics and calculations. It's a bit of a Hail Mary, but it's our only shot. Admiral Thompson peered at the plans, his face etched with skepticism. Space shuttles? Those things are museum pieces. You expect to fight the Wagner with outdated NASA junk? Not as they are, no. But with the right modifications and upgrades, they could slip past the Wagner sensors. Get in close enough to fry those bastards with EMP generators. The world leaders gathered around the table muttered amongst themselves, expressions ranging from doubt to desperation. The French president spoke up, her voice strained. Monsieur Ward, this plan, it is quite audacious. How can we be sure it will succeed? Ward locked eyes with her. We can't, but if we don't act now in a few days, there won't be a human race left to save. After a tense pause, the leaders nodded grimly. You have our support, the Admiral said, and our prayers. With the clock ticking, Ward raced to assemble his team. He called up Mike Maverick Johnson, his old Navy SEAL buddy. Mav, I need the best of the best. Guys who can fly these shuttles like X-Wings against the Death Star. Maverick snorted. You always did love those movies. I'll get the band back together. Next, Ward tracked down Dr. David Kim, a brilliant NASA engineer. Kim, we need that big brain of yours. The shuttles need speed, stealth, and one hell of an EMP punch. Kim adjusted his glasses, a glint of excitement in his eyes. I've got a few ideas that just might work. As the Phoenix fleet took shape in a secure hangar, the Wagner ships descended on Earth's cities like locusts. Panic tore through the streets as alien tanks rolled down boulevards and energy weapons cut through buildings like butter. On the main view screen of the UN Security Council, Hector's face loomed large. I tire of these games. Surrender now, or I will vaporize one of your cities every hour. Ward gritted his teeth, just a little longer. In the hangar, Kim wiped sweat from his brow as he installed the final EMP generator, Maverick and his pilot strapped into their seats, adrenaline pumping. As Hector's finger hovered over the trigger to annihilate New York, a klaxon blared on the Wagner Bridge. The Phoenix fleet burst from the atmosphere like avenging angels, their hulls shimmering with advanced stealth tech. Ward allowed himself a grim smile. Time to show these alien bastards what humanity was made of. The Wagner fleet opened fire with a storm of plasma and missiles, as the Phoenix fleet screamed toward them. Incandescent bolts of energy howled past the cockpits, narrowly missing the deftly piloted shuttles. Ward gritted his teeth and wrenched the stick, sending his craft into a corkscrew between sizzling beams of death. The team's advanced stealth tech made locking on almost impossible for the frustrated Wagner gunners. Maverick's voice crackled over the comms. Damn, 
These guys couldn't hit the broadside of a barn. Ward smirked. Let's give them something to really miss. Form up on me. The shuttles arrow-headed toward the hulking Wagner flagship at full burn. Alien batteries swiveled to meet them, unleashing a hellish crossfire, but the human pilots juked and jinked with superhuman coordination. As they screamed past the miles-long dreadnought, Ward slammed a button on his console. A pulse of blue-white energy erupted from the underbelly of his shuttle, washing over the flagship's shields. Lightning crackled across the barrier for a split second before it winked out of existence. Maverick let out a whoop as he and the others followed suit, their EMPs gutting the Wagner ship's defences. On the ground, human resistance forces looked to the skies with renewed hope as the alien vessels suddenly went dark and silent. Tank commanders roared orders into their mics, and the armor of Earth thundered forward to meet the Vogner invaders head-on. Attack choppers and fighter jets screamed overhead, rockets and autocannon fire tearing into the alien ranks with ruthless precision. In the streets, human infantry engaged their foes with a ferocity born of desperation and rage. They knew every inch of their cities, every alley and rooftop, and they used that knowledge to deadly effect. The Wagner, their advanced tech useless and their tactics inflexible, crumpled under the onslaught. Hector slammed a clawed fist onto his command console as damage reports flooded in. All ships fall back to the flagship, he snarled. As the Wagner craft limped back to their mothership, Ward keyed his mic. Kim, tell me you've got something up your sleeve for these bastards. The engineer's face appeared on the screen, a wide grin splitting his features. Oh, I've got more than that. I've whipped up a little present for our scaly friends, a virus that'll turn their fancy tech into so much space junk, but you'll need to upload it directly. Ward nodded grimly. Mav, you're with me. The rest of you keep those ships off our backs. He angled his shuttle toward the flagship's hangar bay, Maverick close on his tail. As the massive doors yawned open to receive Ector's ship, the two humans gunned their thrusters and slipped in behind him. Ward and Maverick popped their canopies and leaped into the open bay pulse rifles in hand. It was time to take this fight to the heart of the beast. The Wagner flagship's airlock hissed open as Warden Maverick emerged from their shuttles, pulse rifles raised. Alarms blared and emergency lights strobed red. Wagner soldiers, hissing and snarling, charged down the corridor. Ward squeezed off controlled bursts, downing two. Maverick's rifle barked, dropping another. A Wagner leapt from the shadows, slashing with razor-sharp claws. Ward ducked and slammed his rifle butt into the alien's skull. Maverick grappled with another, twisting its arm until bones snapped. The humans moved like a well-oiled machine, covering each other as they advanced. Mainframe's fifty meters ahead, Maverick said, consulting his wrist computer. Better move fast. Kim says these bastards are trying to scuttle the ship. Ward nodded grimly. They sprinted down the corridor, taking out Wagner guards with ruthless efficiency. The aliens were strong and fast, but Ward and Maverick had spent years training for this kind of close-quarters combat. They reached the mainframe chamber, a cavernous room filled with pulsing alien tech. Hector stood at the central console, flanked by his elite guard. The Wagner leader hissed in rage. You dare challenge the might of the Wagner Empire. You will die screaming, humans. Ward leveled his rifle. Not today, you scaly fuck! All hell broke loose. Hector's guards surged forward, plasma blades igniting. Ward opened fire, dropping two, but the others closed in. He swung his rifle like a club, smashing one guard's jaw. Another slashed at his face, drawing blood. Maverick sprinted for the console, dodging and weaving through the chaos. A Wagner guard lunged at him, but he sidestepped and put a pulse round through its eye. Hector drew a wicked-looking plasma sword and charged at Ward, roaring. Their blades clashed in a shower of sparks. The Wagner leader was stronger, faster, his blows raining down like meteors. Ward gritted his teeth and held his ground, buying time for Maverick. At the console, Maverick's fingers flew over the alien controls. Come on, come on, he muttered. The computer beeped. The virus was uploading. Hector's blade slipped past Ward's guard slicing into his shoulder. Ward cried out in pain. The Wagner leader grinned savagely, raising his sword for the killing blow. Suddenly the ship's systems went haywire. 
Consoles exploded in showers of sparks. Lights flickered and died. Hector stumbled, thrown off balance. Ward surged forward, slamming his fist into the alien's throat. Hector gurgled and went down. Virus is in, Maverick shouted. Let's get the hell out of here. They sprinted back to the airlock, pulse rounds and plasma bolts crisscrossing the smoke-filled corridors. Alarms screamed as the virus tore through the ship's systems. The Wagner were in complete disarray. The airlock doors opened to reveal a shuttle hovering outside, its hatch open. Dr. Kim waved frantically from the pilot's seat. Ward and Maverick leaped across the void, landing hard inside the shuttle. As they rocketed away from the dying flagship, Ward looked back at the Vognia fleet. One by one, the alien ships shuddered and went dark, drifting out of formation. Some collided with each other in slow-motion explosions. The virus had done its job. Maverick clapped Ward on the shoulder, grinning fiercely. We did it, man. We fucking did it. Ward nodded, exhaustion and relief washing over him, but the battle was far from over. The Phoenix fleet limped back to Earth, scarred and battered but victorious. Ward, his face streaked with blood and grime, guided his shuttle through the atmosphere, his heart heavy with the weight of the sacrifices made. Maverick's seat was empty beside him, a painful reminder of the friend he'd lost. As they touched down on the tarmac, a sea of cheering humanity surrounded them. Medics rushed to tend to the wounded, while soldiers and civilians alike wept tears of joy and relief. But as Ward stepped out of the shuttle, he saw the true extent of the devastation. Skyscrapers lay toppled like discarded toys, fires raged unchecked, and the streets were choked with rubble and the bodies of the fallen. The Vognia had been defeated, but at a terrible cost. In the days that followed, Ward and his team were hailed as heroes. Admiral Thompson pinned medals to their chests in a somber ceremony, his voice thick with emotion as he recounted their bravery and sacrifice. But Ward found no comfort in the accolades. Every time he closed his eyes, he saw the faces of those he couldn't save, heard their screams echoing in his mind. The weight of their loss pressed down on him like a physical burden. As the world began the long, painful process of rebuilding, Ward received a summons from Admiral Thompson. In the Admiral's office, he learned a chilling truth. The Vognir were just one of many hostile alien races lurking in the depths of space. We got lucky this time, Thompson said grimly, but there will be others. We need to be ready. He slid a folder across the desk to Ward. I'm putting together a task force, the Earth Defense Initiative. I want you to lead it. Ward stared at the folder, his mind reeling. The thought of diving back into the fight, of risking more lives, made his stomach churn. But he knew Thompson was right. The Wagner had been a wake-up call, a brutal reminder that humanity was not alone in the universe, and that not all of their cosmic neighbors were friendly. With a heavy sigh, Ward accepted the mission. He knew it would be a long, difficult road ahead, but he owed it to those who had fallen to ensure their sacrifices were not in vain. Before he left to begin his new assignment, Ward made one final stop. He stood before Maverick's grave, his eyes stinging with unshed tears. He placed a hand on the cold marble headstone, his fingers tracing the letters of his friend's name. I'll make it count, Mav, he whispered. I promise. With a final salute, Ward turned and walked away, his footsteps heavy but his resolve unshakable. He boarded the sleek, state-of-the-art spacecraft that would be his home and headquarters for the foreseeable future. As the engines roared to life and the ship lifted off, carrying him into the vast expanse of space, Ward knew that the fight for humanity's survival was only just beginning. But he was ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead, to protect his home and his species, no matter the cost. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.